Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and this is an update in my learning to fly and getting my private pilot's license here in the UK. And I've done it, I've passed another one of these ground school exams. This time it was aircraft general knowledge. Aircraft general knowledge, this is my eighth ground school exam and I passed it on the uh, 17th of August, so a couple of days ago as I'm recording this and I got 87%. So not too bad, I'll admit, a little bit disappointed. I was hoping I was gonna absolutely nail this one in all the, not all of them, but in most of the mock tests uh, that I've been doing, I've been getting 100% each time. So I was confident going into this one, but I thought I was gonna get 100%, I was hoping to, so a little bit disappointed that I didn't. So let me talk to you as usual a little bit about um, some of the questions that came up, um, how I, decided to do my study and then I'll go through my little note cards and stuff that I make as usual to help me with my revision. So uh, as with my other um, exams and learning, I've been using Easy PPL for both the study material and then the test slash mock exam. So there's a link in the description if you decide to use Easy PPL and I really recommend them. Uh, I was using the Pooley's books along with Easy PPL before, um, but for the last four or so exams, I've just been using Easy PPL completely. And I still have a 100% pass rate. I've not failed one of these exams yet, and only one left to go. So fingers crossed. But yeah, link in the description. Um, and if you decide to, you know, sign up because these videos, just put uh, Dale Pearson uh, in the refer a bit. That'd be much appreciated. So, um, so yeah, aircraft general knowledge. It's. Uh, obviously a, an online exam like all of these, 35 uh, minutes to do 16 questions. So um, a reasonable amount of time based on the, the content in my opinion. And uh, I took 14 minutes out of the 35 available minutes to um, complete this exam. In terms of my study time of Easy PL, so I spent five hours and 54 minutes doing um, studying of the actual slides and the material, reading it through, making sure we're kind of understanding. That also includes going back um, to the thick, to some of the content if it's not clear to me uh, after doing some of the exam. So what I tend to do is I read through and go through all the slides to gain the knowledge. Then I go through the mock exams. When I get questions wrong, I will then go back to some of the slides to kind of reread things to make sure I properly understand them. I spent two hours and 43 minutes doing mock exams. And so that's a total of eight hours, 37 minutes doing ground school for the aircraft general knowledge uh, exam. I did around 15 mock exams, which is around a total of 300 different uh, questions to help prepare myself and be ready for it. So again, I still recommend Easy PPL. Uh, and, as, and the other thing I do as I go through, and I mentioned in my other videos, I have these kind of revision cards that I just got off Amazon and anything that I guess I'm struggling to re retain a little bit or I feel I need to kind of study a little bit more. I may basically make a note of them on these study cards so I can reference them and I keep them in the car. Uh, so whilst I'm driving around and doing school runs or at work or whatever, I can just pop these out and kind of have a little quick look over them. So uh, again, I won't, I won't go through all of them. There's um, two and a half sides worth uh, stuff in here but the kind of thing that I write down just to remind myself um, you yeah. know some of these are obvious obviously but just again just to clarify things in my brain so they don't get too jumbled um, the different arcs so the green arc obviously being normal operating range uh, the yellow for you know acceptable for not for long going periods of time and obviously red it's the, up, the, the limits of the range um, obviously with this four stroke engine because there's obviously injection and carb uh, engines in the exams need to be uh, familiar with. So four stroke engine procedure, how that works, induction, compression, power, exhaust. Um, if you have a zero reading on your amp meter, then if the alternator is charged and the battery, it should be slightly to the right. Um, just things like that. And if you're, having in, if you're flying with an injection engine and you have power loss, you should select alternate air, um, non-stressed wing, the spars take up the vertical bending. I'll come back to that one in a minute because I think that's one of the questions I got wrong uh, in the exam. Uh, what the, how the board and pressure gauge works, air pressure automator, uh, destination, push-pull 
of the squelch, camshafts, carburetor, um, all different things, propeller spinners, stuff like that. So these are the kind of notes on my, my approach. For me, uh, this exam was easier and the ground school was easier because I think I have a, a interest and background in engineering, interest in cars and motorbikes. I used to do radio controlled cars, helicopters and planes, that kind of thing. So I understand uh, a reasonable level how engines work mechanically and things like that. Uh, and you might think that aircraft general knowledge should be an exam you do right at the beginning. And while I do think that is potentially valid, uh, I've been doing the exams in the order that uh, my flying school wants me to do them in. And I think having them at the end, this particular one towards the end, is good because you obviously had this time flying the plane, experiencing the different indicators, you know, doing your own walk arounds, inspecting the wheels and the brakes and the wings and everything. So you've already sort of built up this knowledge in the real world as opposed to just, you know, reading textbooks and then trying to align and imagine what it might be like. So I think it's good that um, you know, aircraft general knowledge was one of my later exams. And in terms of the exam itself, as with all these CAA exams, it's multiple choice. Uh, and sometimes the questions are worded in a way that might uh, throw you up. So a couple of my uh, general rules of thumb uh, for these things is any, especially in aircraft general knowledge, any question that relates to restrictions or power levels or variances or anything, if there is an answer that relates to referring to the pilot owner's handbook, that is the right answer. So even though you might say, oh, you know, your instructor has taught you to you know, go over a threshold at a certain speed or anything like that, the answer is always refer to the pilot owner's handbook. So keep that in mind. Um, so I made a note after I came out, a couple of the questions um, that I wasn't too sure about, uh, and then I'll come back to the two that I got wrong. So there was a question about what is the structural member of a wing and there were two options that I thought were possible. So either ribs or the spar. I went with ribs. I'm pretty sure the answer should have been spar. And the reason I went for ribs though is I think both ribs and the spar are somewhat structural members of the wing. But my memory was that the spar is what allows the flexible movement of the, the wing. Um, and the ribs are obviously being more structural in terms of that's what the skin connects to. So that's why I went with ribs, but I'm pretty sure I got that one wrong and it should have been spa. Um, there's a question there that I had about what is the acceptable drop off um, for magnetos. When you're testing your left and right magnetos, obviously you see an RPM drop. Uh, and again, you'll be familiar with this based on flying already and the types of aircraft you see and what kind of drop off that you have. Um, but again, in the questions here, there's a reference uh, and a link to um, the owner's handbook and so again you read through all that carefully various numbers in there and you're looking um, for the drop off that's mentioned there so in uh, the book or in the question there it was 175 rpm was the expected drop off according to the pilot handbook in that exam um, one of the other questions uh, disadvantage of a venturi tube uh, and i Pretty sure that's one right. The, one of the disadvantages of the Venturi tube is it doesn't start to operate effectively until you're in flight and you have a sufficient amount of airflow to make that work. Um, and if the suction gauge had low pressure, what is the effect? Uh, and I said that the effect is an unreadable AI in DI. Maybe I've got that one wrong, I'm not too sure. So, as I mentioned, I've got 87%, which means I've got two of the questions wrong. Uh, and you obviously don't get to know exactly what question you got wrong, just a reference back to the CAA um, syllabus. So the first one I got wrong was reference 021.02.01.01. And this relates to wings and tail surfaces and the design and construction. So I'm pretty sure this related to that question about structural uh, parts of the wing. I put ribs instead of um, spar and I think the answer spa uh, and then the second one was reference 022.01.01.01 and this relates to pressure gauges and the different types design operation and characteristics so maybe the question around the low suction I've obviously potentially answered that wrongly or inter misinterpreted the question which I think is uh, a likelihood with the way some of these questions are worded by the CAA but 
That's it. I hope these videos continue to help and give you some insight if you're doing your PPL and what the exams are like and, and different study methods you may consider and resources. Again, easy PPL working really well for me. I've got one ground school exam left to do, so that is principles of flight. I've not started looking at it yet. Um, we're going to look at that next week and uh, hopefully get that done by the end of September is going to be my goal, depending on work and other things. But yeah, any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Please like the video if you have done and consider subscribing if you haven't done already. Flying stuff, geeky stuff, car stuff, motorbikes, gadgets, all sorts of stuff, something that hopefully you'll find interesting in addition to this flying lark. But uh, that's it. Until the next video, take care and goodbye for now.